Hello everyone, this is Tristan, your resident tech assistant. Uh, today we're going to learn how to create an Apple ID. If you own an Apple device, such as the iPads from the Democrat Gazette, or an iPhone, creating an Apple ID will allow you to experience some of the other features of your device when you're ready to learn how. With an Apple ID, you will be able to download free applications you might want to start using. I'll reiterate the word free, as we will not be covering the use of apps that require payment to use. We'll be using an iPad for this example, but the process works the same with iPhones. Let's get started. First, we'll open our iPad and find the Settings app. It looks like a gray set of gears, and it may be on the front page of the iPad, or you may have to look on the other pages by swiping left or right. For me, it's down at the bottom of my screen. Tap the app to open it up. If you've never signed into your device with an Apple ID, you'll see an option to sign into your iPad in the upper left-hand corner of the device. Tap the blue words there to open up a new screen. Here's where you would sign into an existing Apple ID. If you have one and know the password, enter that here and you're all set. If you need to create one, you'll see the don't have Apple ID or forgot it option. Tap the blue words here. That prompts this new pop-up, and we'll choose Create Apple ID. Tap there. We'll now enter our first and last name and our birthday, and then the next in the upper right-hand corner of the window. Tap here. Now we'll enter our email here and attach it to this new Apple ID. If you don't have an email, I've released a previous video that instructs how to create an email using Gmail. Please refer to that before continuing if you need to set one up. In this same window, you have the option to receive Apple news and announcements. I recommend switching this toggle off by tapping it. This will avoid receiving spam emails from Apple. Once you've entered your email, tap Next in the upper right-hand corner again. Now we'll make a password for your Apple ID. This password does have to be at least eight characters long, include a number, an uppercase letter, and a lowercase letter. You want to try to make it something unique to Apple and record it somewhere you can readily have access to it. You'll enter it once and then again right below that. They do have to match and meet those previously mentioned requirements or you will not be able to progress. Once that's entered properly, you'll tap next again. Now we're going to enter a phone number that's used to verify our identity and connect our device to us. This is the number that will be used in case you forget or lose your password to verify that it is in fact you trying to log into your device. You may choose to have a text sent to you with a verification code or have an automated phone call made to you with a code. You may only choose to receive the text if you are entering a mobile phone number. If you are using a landline phone number, you must choose the phone call. This form of two-factor identification keeps your device and its contents secure and will be needed should you want to make any purchases within the App Store or within apps that you download. You may want to have a pen and paper ready to record the PIN number if you've chosen the phone call. When you tap Next, depending on the selection you've made, you'll receive a text or a phone call with a six-digit PIN code. Tap Next to move forward. This is there where we will enter the code that we received. If you take too long between the code being sent and entering it in, you'll need a new code to be sent. You can do that by tapping the blue words, didn't get a verification code. Tap next after you've entered the code. This brings up the terms and conditions window. You may read through all of it if you want or have it sent to you by email by tapping these blue words. It is very lengthy and full of official jargon. You must agree to the terms to move forward. I tend to just tap agree and move to the next step. You'll be asked to confirm that you agree again, so tap here. You should see this window pop up saying signing into iCloud and this wheel will be spinning. That tells us that the Apple ID is being created. The next window you'll see asks you to set a 
four-digit or six-digit PIN number. Some devices ask for a six-digit PIN by default. This is for even more security when it comes to accessing your account and device. Enter any four-digit or six-digit PIN, whichever one the device is requesting, that you can easily remember or record it somewhere. You'll notice that in the background of the screen your Apple ID name will have already popped up. Next, we'll finish this whole process by verifying our Apple ID through our email that we have attached to it. So head to the email account that you attached to this Apple ID. You should have a new email in your inbox from Apple, and the subject line should say something like verify your Apple ID. Open that up and you'll see a link that says verify now. If you click that, it will open a new window. That window should look like this, telling you that you verified your email address. If you return to your device, you'll be able to tell that you've successfully signed in with your Apple ID by returning to the Settings app, and the upper left-hand corner will no longer ask you to sign in. Instead, it will show your name. Now that we have our Apple ID set up, we can expand the functions of our device with new and existing apps. Things like FaceTime are now possible to use freely, but that will be another topic of discussion. Thank you all for listening, and if you come up with any questions, please feel free to call the Resident Tech Assistance phone line at 479-695-8030. Thanks again.